Dear students, welcome to our class on Cyclones. Advances 1. So it is not basics. This is uh, advances. In the previous class, uh, we tried to understand in the basics of cyclones. You know, cyclones basics. We tried to understand what is the definition of cyclone. The atmospheric disturbance in which, uh, okay, uh, it is an atmospheric disturbance. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, uh, Agrometrology Farmers and Road Development. There in the uh, wind chapter, okay. So I have in the previous chapter also, you know, I have defined. Uh, what is cyclone? What are um, uh, anti cyclones? Cyclone is a centrally low pressure. The pressure goes on increasing from the center of the periphery. It is associated with three processes. Number one, more of, mo of man, uh, more of moisture in the atmosphere, cloud formation, then rain, and the cyclones move in the anti clockwise direction in the northern hemisphere. They move in the clockwise direction in the southern hemisphere, like that, like that. Uh, we try to understand here. Now, in this class, uh, okay, in the previous class of basics, you know, cyclones separately, okay, we try to understand what is the definition of cyclone, the atmospheric disturbance which involves a closed circulation around a low pressure center, okay. Anti clockwise in the northern hemisphere, clockwise in the southern hemisphere. From there, we try to understand the formation and movement of the cyclones. There, we try to understand the cyclones are formed because of uh, uh, lithosphere, hydrosphere, and atmospheric interactions. The genesis of the cyclones takes like that. Then, we try to understand what is the life cycle of a tropical cyclone. So, life cycle, four phases are there. First one is the formative stage, second stage is immature stage, third one is the mature stage, fourth one is the decay stage. This also we try to understand. <coughs> as far as the structure of cyclone is concerned, we try to understand. Uh, so, uh, it, it has got an eye, a wall, cloud region, outer periphery, like that. And uh, as far as the classification of cyclones are concerned, first uh, low pressure, second uh, depression, third one is the uh, deep depression, the fourth one is the uh, cyclonic storm, CS we call it as a severe cyclonic storm, very severe cyclonic storm, super cyclonic storm. Then what are the effects of the cyclones? Damage to the general systems, damage to the agriculture system. Of course, we also try to understand uh, because this is the advanced uh, now in the basic class uh, one or two positive aspects of cyclone which is not really uh, acceptable to the society still there are some positive points uh, that's what we discussed in the last class and how to manage the cyclones also we tried uh, to understand and uh, how to protect the animals uh, finally cyclone mitigation measures for the agriculture system we tried to understand that was the basics now this is the at a model agromet advisory for cyclone, a model agromet advisory for cyclone. Uh, the oh, I have taken the example of a hood hood cyclone which had occurred on 12th October 2014. Okay, it affected Andhra Pradesh in southern India, southern India and Orissa, and later it had. Uh, affected the other parts of uh, northern India including Nepal. So 12th October 2014, Kudhu cyclone occurred. The stepwise advisory is given below. This is my book, Principles and Practices of Agriculture Disaster Management book. So there, okay, I have collected, okay, a stepwise advisory for reference and adoption and contingency measures uh, to minimize and prevent, to minimize and prevent uh, further damage. Okay, of agricultural standing crops to prevent further damage. Damage occurred, it's not in our hands. Weather forecasting was given, excellent steps were taken. It was one of the most successfully managed uh, cyclone in the state of Andhra Pradesh, the best management of the administration, political, NGOs, everything. No, no single life uh, lost in spite of its, uh, its God's grace, uh, in spite of its uh, heavy, heavy severity. So, as far as uh, then we thought, the agrometrologists thought that, uh, okay, we should give the advisory. So, this is what I am going to discuss with you. First, uh, rice crop. As far as rice crop is concerned, the damage was seen in rice crop. Crop in various uh, growth stages affected due to partial or complete lodging. Rice crop lodged partially or complete due to high speed winds and uh, 
partial inundation due to accompanying rain partial inundation long duration crop varieties rice uh, usually 120 days short duration 140 to 150 medium duration long duration more than 160 170 we call it as in this region now long duration crop varieties are in uh, panicle initiation to grain filling stage while medium maturing varieties were in uh, flowering stage rice at the uh, flowering stage has been seriously affected rice at the flowering stage was very seriously affected Okay, uh, flood is uh, imminent in low-lying villages of uh, Sri Kakram district and uh, adjoining areas. This was the finding. As far as the damage is concerned, the advisory given was uh, drain out excess water by making LAs at periodic intervals in the lodged crop. Crop lodged, make LAs. Make LAs. A L L E Y. Yes. Okay. So take up. Uh, Staking of plants at the grain filling stage. Crop at the grain filling stage shall be staked. Second, then after flood water is receded, apply 25 kg urea and 10 to 15 kg of muriate of potassium as booster dose to long duration varieties. Apply 15 to 20 kg of potassium or spray of okay any any uh, complex fertilizer okay uh, we advise that early planted rice which is in the maturity stage may be sprayed with a five percent salt solution to prevent the seed germination seed germination on the crop seed germination to prevent five percent common salt solution spray we think it was recommended of course uh, uh, these are the basic things that uh, were given for uh, rice crop as far as uh, the next crop maize is concerned Maize damage to the maize was uh, lodging and uh, stress due to excess soil moisture. Okay, it is due to excess soil moisture. Then the advisory given what? Taking up a larger plant, provide a quick drainage of excess water by opening the furrows. We, we advise uh, opening of the furrows, uh, harvest crops at the physiological maturity instead of uh, harvesting maturity. Okay, so marketable green crops are for fodder purpose in case a crop is badly damaged undertake earthing up that means you know earthing up means putting up putting the soil around the roots so it has got okay um, not tap root system it has got the uh, other type of uh, root systems okay uh, it has, uh, so that is why so it is very easy to go for earthing up uh, now undertake earthing up and uh, in mild to moderately affected fields uh, due to lodging or uprooting uh, take up uh, prophylactic or need based spray to prevent fungal diseases uh, at that time fungal diseases were uh, expected this is with refers to maize oil seeds crops the major oil seeds crops in that region were uh, groundnut and sesame the damage was lodging in sesame water logging in groundnut crop the advisory was a harvest at the physiological maturity of parts in sesame undertake a quick drying threshing and safe storage and marketing quickly and provide quick reduction in soil moisture in groundnut fields to prevent premature germination by opening up for drainage channels immediately after the flood water recedes and harvest at the physiological maturity for groundnut and sesame crop. This is with the oil seed crops. And another advice that was given to the oil seed crops was in slightly affected water logging groundnut fields, take up need based spray of fungicide. Okay, to prevent late leaf spot disease, to prevent late leaf spot disease that we advised. And finally, in case of uh, severe shortage of uh, green water to milk cattle, harvest groundnut and use hulls for feeding of the animals. This was uh, with reference to oil seed crop. As far as the short duration pulse crops are concerned, these are uh, green gram, black gram, horse gram. This is, this is what the crops so The advisor, the damage was water logging in pulses and lodging in pigeon pea crop. Pigeon pea, that's what we call it as a red gram here. So, okay, it is almost 160 to 170 days duration lodging. So, that was observed. Harvest the late planted pulses at physiological maturity like oil seed crop. Okay. Provide early drainage from water logged fields. Early drainage. Okay. Uh, use damaged plants as fodder to milk animals. So that is the option. Uh, uh, is a technological intervention. Take 
a larger branch in pigeon B and undertaking acting up again acting up here there, there is a tap root system for so acting up of plants at the earliest opportunity okay then uh, in badly affected fields uh, due to water logging uh, harvest the crop for fodder purpose yeah, under inevitable circumstances we advise for harvesting and giving it for the animals animals at least they survive farmer get some advantage out of it uh, farmers welfare is our motto animals uh, survival and their uh, Health is our motto, keeping that point in view. As far as sugarcane crop is concerned, see, uh, I had personally visited all these things. So that's why, so I had mentioned in my book, uh, Principles and Practices of Agriculture Disaster Management, as far as sugarcane crop is concerned, okay. So, lodging and water logging we observed there. So, what we advised was the staking of larger plants, provide quick damage by opening the furrows, acting up of the effective plants. This is what we advised. As far as vegetable crops are concerned, we noticed the damage. Lodging and the water logging in tomato, brinjal, radish, and cucurbit crops, the advisory given was standing crops damage due to lodging and water logging, harvest. Harvest produce at the earliest opportunity. We just uh, go for harvesting at the earliest opportunity. Undertake uh, shifting, grading, and marketing of produce as quickly as possible. Grading it, okay. Shift to the uh, market as quickly as possible. Harvest at physiological maturity. Undertake uh, nipping of apical buds to reduce uh, to induce. Uh, so, symporial branching uh, to compensate for uh, production loss. Symporial branches we call it as nipping. Nipping means you know, cutting up uh, certain parts of the plant in certain vegetables. Uh, okay, apply light booster dose of fertilizer, particularly NPK, a uh, complex fertilizer we advise. Uh, of course, soil application is not possible. If soil application is not possible, spray of 2% urea or DAP 0.1% FOP we uh, suggested. Of course, to take up a community nursery, to take up community immediately with the community nursery and uh, to supply seedlings for the cultivation of vegetable crops in the post flood situation in badly affected villages. This is what we advise as far as plantation crops are concerned. So, coconut, banana, cashew, false crop, uh, pulp wood, you know, see plantations, you know, cashew rain, eucalyptus, that's what I was interested to have interest upon you. It is one of the wonderful areas uh, in between, in the coastal areas of Khandar Bay, where uh, uh, I am uh, now, okay, uh, where I worked. So, at that time when we had gone there, the damage was enormous there, I applied uh, my of course so that's what i would like to say my teachers have taught me what is zero blend displacement what is the roughness parameter where z0 that is the roughness parameter okay d okay uh, zero blend displacement to merge there the physically the uh, theoretically the wind speed becomes zero by using that technique i advise uh, okay um, sand bags to be staked in and around the plantation. That was one of the most satisfying exercises uh, as far as micrometrological techniques uh, by using reference parameters, zero plane displacement, uh, uh, which I used to say teach my brilliant students. Students are my strength, always. My teachers taught me, students have always given me an enormous amount of uh, their encouragement and then their inputs are something which I cannot say in words. So, during this cyclone, we advise that one. So, uh, and, uh, up, again, uh, yeah, as far as application is apply of uh, fertilizer is concerned, booster dose we recommended for the, uh, the plantation crop, though, provide early drainage of excess water, propping or staking of the partially damaged uprooted trees in banana, remove larger plants uh, to allow one good sucker to replace the last plant. Suckers we, we requested farmers to allow to so that prune the broken branches of trees sir, and apply board axe paste. That physically, actually, we train the farmers for, for application of board axe paste. Sir. Apply booster dose of fertilizer. Apply need blaze uh, plant protection. And uh, for coconut, apply copper oxychloride 3 grams per liter of water in walls uh, after clearing the broken or dropped leaves in young uh, trees. Okay, so. Uh, fresh planting may be taken up uh, in place of a uh, large uh, uprooted old trees. We suggested for the old trees, you know, farmers uh, go for large scale plantations uh, by spending enormous amount of money from their pockets. They borrow loans and whatnot. They toil, they work a lot. Uh, so we must not and should not uh, encourage uh, even uh, at the least possible case uh, to, uh, up, uh, to remove the plantation crops. 
to the extent possible we should protect them however very very old trees we, we suggested which are not economical there uh, we, we suggested for uh, some sort of uh, okay uh, to replace uh, old ones with the new ones uh, and uh, gap filling that's what we call that so this is what i would like to uh, share with you this is uh, certainly an application that's why cyclones uh, advances one i am telling as far as hood hood cyclone okay in the year 2014 uh, that had occurred in the state of Andhra Pradesh, which affected Orissa and later, okay, even the northern states of India and Nepal also to some extent. Thank you very much. May God bless you.